My friend Mark bought this 2005 Skidoo GTX Rev chassis about three weeks ago now, I suppose. I've been doing a little bit of electrical chasing on this thing and that's why I've got it all stripped apart. But I've gotten to the point where I now want to look at the clutches. Today we're going to look specifically at the secondary clutch or the driven clutch as it's properly called. Good clutch setup and cleanliness really can make the sled ride much better, shift much better and keep your belt in good shape too. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something warm to drink, as we explore this secondary clutch. I'll see you in a few minutes. Now before we get too far into this particular project, I do want to point out that I am not a mechanic. I don't work on snowmobiles for a living. This is a hobby for me, as is making videos. I like to share what limited knowledge that I have so that other people can maybe learn something. One of my problems is I am rather long-winded and my videos tend to be lengthy because I want to share with you why you're doing the project, not just how to do it. Because of this, I always include timecode chapters in my videos so you can skip from part to part and save you from listening to some of my blabbering. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Just about every snowmobile manufacturer in history has used a transmission like you see here. Combined, these two pulleys form what's known as a CVT or a constantly variable transmission. Basically how this works is it has one clutch assembly mounted right to the crankshaft and then the secondary clutch is mounted to a jack shaft, in this case anyway, that runs across to your chain case. Now both of these have the ability to move in and out and when you put a belt in between these two sheaves and apply torque from the engine, what will happen is the belt will actually move from the bottom of the primary up to the top of the primary and from the top of the secondary down to the bottom of the secondary. This in turn changes the gear ratio between the engine and the actual drive line. And seamlessly shifts gears all the way up to the highest RPMs that the engine can put out. When these work, they work great. They're super smooth, power transmission is very efficient, and they're relatively quiet as well. And the operator doesn't have to shift gears or mess with a clutch or anything like that. However, they do require some maintenance over time. And depending on how well you've cared for your clutches, that maintenance can be just a light dust cleaning and some polishing, down to changing out bushings and, and uh, guide pucks and all kinds of things in these. Now because this machine is brand new to my friend Mark, I want to take these clutches apart, I want to polish them and inspect them for any kind of catastrophic damage that might be hiding inside in the castings. I also want to check the buttons on these. They have little small uh, Teflon buttons in there that slide on metal surfaces to make these things shift well. They're both a little bit different and today we're going to take a look at the secondary clutch or what's known as the driven clutch. Now you're going to notice everything's pretty clean here. I've already had this clutch off and I've actually inspected it. But because this machine was so greasy, I found it difficult to actually operate the camera without getting it covered in grease too. So what I'm going to do is, now that it's all clean, I'm going to walk you through how to get this thing off of here and how to service it. So let's start by actually getting this thing off of the machine and up onto the bench. 
all manufacturers have a little bit of a different way that they mount these clutches. Some of them are pretty similar, but Skidoo's newer clutch assemblies on their XS chassis and their XM chassis, the secondary clutch is actually attached to the jack shaft. Now this is what I believe is a formula RER secondary clutch. So it's a formula secondary and it's designed to run with a machine that has RER reverse. So it's a little bit different than one that has mechanical reverse. So RER basically spins the engine backwards and this clutch is designed to accept that type of counter rotation. But the nice thing about these older rev chassis and this formula secondary is the clutch itself can come right off of the jack shaft and it's really easy to work with. And a lot of other uh, secondary clutches from Yamaha and Arcticat and Polaris are very, very similar to this, but there will always be slight differences. So make sure to check in your manual if you're trying to sort of follow along, but you have a different machine. The way we're going to start with this is there's a 13 millimeter headed bolt here that runs in and fastens this to the jack shaft. So we're going to start by removing the bolt and this shouldered retaining washer here that holds the machine on. To do that, we're going to need a small 13 millimeter wrench. Now remember, I've had this clutch off. Normally, there's a little bit of Loctite on this bolt that's going to make it difficult to unthread with your fingers. But this one's pretty easy. So it basically comes out and that's what you have is a bolt with this shouldered washer. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pay attention that this shouldered washer goes in with the step down on the shoulder facing inward when you go to reassemble it. All right, now that we have this bolt out, I'm just gonna set it aside up on the workbench there. Now these older secondary clutches usually just slide off either a spline shaft like this one or in some cases like Polaris they'll have a smooth shaft with a keyway cut into them. Either way when you pull these off sometimes there might be a little bit of grease in behind there that holds on to components so when you pull it off do it slowly and make sure you don't lose the woodruff key or there are a stacked set of washers in behind this one so we'll just gently grab it and slide it off the shaft like that. Now I'm going to set this up here and I'll show you these washers. Okay so here you can see our spline shaft. Again some other manufacturers just might have a keyway cut in it instead of splines. Here is actually the bearing support, the bearings right there that supports this side of the jack shaft. Now if you look right here, there are three. Let me see if I can separate them here for you. They got a little bit of grease on them because I just put these on yesterday. There we go. So there's one large, and in this case, two smaller washers that are on this jack shaft. Now, these were completely covered in grease when I opened this up the other day. Everything was covered in grease. So the first thing that I like to do is take a bit of degreaser or brake cleaner with some gloves on and clean everything up in behind the clutch, including these spacers. You want to make sure not to lose these because these are instrumental in lining up and positioning the secondary in the right location so the belt is properly centered on the primary clutch. Now because these are all nice and clean, I'm just going to slide them back against this bearing. Now, I did apply a little bit of grease on here just to make sure that nothing rusts and that um, this has a little bit of uh, lubrication around the, ax uh, the actual bearing seal. So that's what's behind this one. Again, yours might be a little bit different. All right, now that we have the driven pulley off of the snowmobile, I'm going to put it up on the bench here and we're gonna take a quick look at all of the components. Okay, so here is your basic secondary clutch, how you're gonna see it when you take it off of, the, uh, off of the sled. 
Now again, I've cleaned all of this up. I just used some warm soapy water and some small brushes and got in here and cleaned all of the belt dust off of this. And I highly encourage this. Get, if you have an air compressor, you can blow some of this off if you have a dust mask. But your goal is to get this thing as clean as possible. And the reason for that is twofold. One is if it's nice and clean, you can inspect all of the aluminum castings here for any kind of stress cracks. You can actually see them. And secondly, that belt dust can actually find its way inside of the clutch itself and create performance issues, I suppose, um, as you run the clutch. Now again, every make and model of clutch from every manufacturer is slightly different, but they usually share some similarities. So these three bolts here and these little uh, trapezoidal shaped washers actually fit the inside of this tapered ring that you can turn. And what that does is you loosen those three off. We'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but it allows you to fine tune the uh, standing belt width, I suppose, of the two movable sheaves here, or one movable sheave. Now, um, you can see that these are balanced. That's what these holes are here. From the factory, they balance these. They spin at extraordinarily high RPMs. Engine RPM on, on this particular machine is probably somewhere around 7,800 to 8,000 RPM. And as the clutch winds out, this probably is going to spin twice that speed, maybe 15 to 20,000 RPM when you think about that uh, because of the gearing. As, as the belt climbs on the primary and shrinks on this secondary, think of it like a 10 speed it's going to spin this secondary faster than the engine actually is turning. So that's why these are very precision ground and why as you work on these things, you want to be careful not to alter any of the weight distribution inside these clutches. Now as we flip this over, what you're going to see on this machine anyway is what's known as your helix. That's what this piece is right here and we're going to pull this out. There's some retaining clips here, and these could be different depending on what type of clutch it is. And again, you can see some balancing holes here on this sheave as well. So you want to make sure that you um, try to maintain the balance as best you can when you take these things apart, and then um, they'll run better as you put them back on the machine. So what I'm going to do first, before I take this thing any further, is I am going to actually take a permanent marker here and put a couple marks for reference to see how these sheaves line up, just as they sit factory. It's maybe not 100% necessary, but if you put it back the way you find it, it's going to be better in the long run. So that's what these things look like on the outside. To take one of these clutches apart to actually get inside, inspect and service it, you will need a couple specialized tools. Well, one of them specialized. The other one is just a, some kind of a magnet, at least for this one. A magnet is much easier to pull out the locking keys, which I'll show you in a minute. But just about every one of these secondary clutches is under spring tension and in order to actually disassemble it you're going to need something like this which is a uh, clutch compressor now this is a store-bought one it's actually from a kit for my 900 ace but these are pretty easy to make out of some three-quarter inch threaded rod and a, and a nut you don't even have to have the handle you can turn these down and then put a wrench on them and just fasten the other end in a vise for me, I have this tool, so I'm going to actually use it. So I'm going to set it up in the vise here. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this and lock it into my vise using one side of the actual press. Then I'll take off the upper nut here and all of the accessories except one washer that I'm going to leave down on the bottom. Next, I'm going to 
take the helix side facing up and I'm going to slide the entire assembly over top of that shaft, trying not to scratch the inside of these, uh, the spline shaft. So it basically just goes down like that and sits on that washer. Now I'm going to use a couple supports here to go across and I have a small piece of plywood as well that goes on there. What you need is you need to have access inside of here so that you can actually pull out the locking rings. Next, I am going to take these two and put those on. That just takes up space. And then I'm going to thread this down until it just, just makes contact. Ooh, that's loud. There we go. Now that we have it in the press here, if you look inside, you can see the spline shaft and there are these half moon shaped retaining keys that are held in place by this sort of cupped washer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some pressure with the press and that in turn will shove the helix down inside the body of the clutch. This will re actually reveal those half moon retainers and allow us to pull them out with the end of this magnet. So let's do that. We'll just put some pressure on and you're going to see it doesn't take much. That's all it takes. We can reach in and pull out our half moon retainer from the front and then we need to reach around the back here and grab the other one. And it comes out exactly the same way. Now when we relieve pressure on the actual um, press, you'll see that the helix is going to come all the way out now. And this is going to allow us to gain access into the actual housing itself. All right, now to further break down the actual clutch, we're going to first take off that dished washer, which you can see right here. I'm going to set it over here and I'm just going to drop in those half moon locks into it so I know where they are. Next, we're actually going to pull out the helix. So the helix just pulls straight out. It's attached with splines here onto the shaft. And you can see why they actually call it a helix uh, as all of these ramps here are twisted on. So this is what actually, as this moves up and down, um, it opens and closes the, uh, the sheaves. Now this surface here is a bearing surface that matches up inside with this bushing. When I first started working on um, snowmobile clutches, I was pretty aggressive with my cleaning, trying to get every last little bit off of these things. Now you want this to be smooth, so you use very low abrasive um, scotch bright to clean these. We can come in and, and polish those up until they're smooth. And then I use brake cleaner to get any residue off of these. But what's interesting is the bushing that sits in here, and we'll take a little closer look at that, actually impregnates this surface with a little bit of Teflon as the unit's moving. At least according to the manual, that's what it does. So I don't like to clean this bushing too aggressively in case I take all the Teflon off. And here I've got a small half moon uh, plastic washer that faces up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it right inside here. I'm gonna take this next washer and I'm gonna place it upside down just to keep everything nice and organized. And as you go through here, again, you can wipe all this down with soap and water, clean all the brake dust off of it, just to try and make it as clean as possible. Next, I'm gonna pull the spring out. And this particular spring has, uh, or, or clutch, only has one hole down inside there, right here, for the actual clutch uh, registration pin to go in. If you have a clutch with multiple holes, make sure to take note of where that, that reference pin goes as you pull out the spring. The manual will normally tell you what the stock position is, but just to be sure, check uh, that it hasn't been modified or moved into a different location. When you do look at these springs, you're going to want to make sure that they're in good shape. 
They're relatively clean. There's no cracks. It's not missing any links or anything like that. This one looks good. And the same with the Helix. I'm going to inspect that for any kind of cracking, abnormal wear, which you're going to know when you look at these things, making sure the splines are in good shape and uh, that, it's, that it's in reasonably good condition. And this one really is. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Now, these two pieces will actually separate now. So I can actually take this and pop it off. There we go. These were pretty dirty when I first opened the clutch up. Their aluminum has a tendency to corrode anyway. It doesn't rust, but it oxidizes. And it had a lot of belt rubber buildup all around the outside of the uh, sheaves themselves here. The belt that I took off this was probably an eighth of an inch narrower than it should have been. And I think most of that belt was living in these sheaves here. To clean these up, I just used uh, Scotch-Brite, working kind of on an angle like this as best I could, and, and working through and, and cleaning it up. And this is probably the hardest part that you're going to deal with, and it's messy. It really is. I mean, you can kind of see here just after this, there's quite a bit of black on there from the aluminum. However, going through this process and cleaning up the sheaves so they're nice and uniform really does help your belt to grab and transmit power. It's one of the most important things that you're going to do when you service your clutches is make sure that the bearing surfaces are nice and clean. These took me probably about an hour to get them to this point just because they were such in bad repair. There's no cracks or any damage to it. It's just neglect. They had not been cleaned even though the seller told us it's serviced every year. So whoever was servicing the machine for them didn't really do anything to the clutches. There's a bearing surface here that I always find is a little bit rough. And this rides right here on these stacked washers is where that sits. These stacked washers actually are your adjustment for, for your belt deflection. So those three bolts that we looked at originally on the outside they push in on this set of stacked washers, which in turn push against this mating surface here. That's how this works. Now this shaft here, the spline shaft, rides inside of this bearing itself. And you can measure these. You can either use uh, a set of verniers like these, and you can come in and sort of measure these and see what the... Uh, it's not in millimeters. So I got 38.17 mil on that. I do actually have a set of internal gauges. I'm thinking this is probably the one I'm going to want here. So these basically go in. You expand them. You get them to where they're centered. Then you tighten them down. And you come out and you can then measure that as well. I could go and check the manual and see what that actually is supposed to be. But this bushing and the large bushing you can measure to make sure they're in spec. This one's nice and tight. It slides really good, so I'm pretty confident that it is actually in spec. Never a bad thing to actually measure those. Okay, so we've cleaned up our sheaves. We've inspected all the webbing and inside for any cracks. Now I'm going to take you in a little bit closer here, and you can see the, uh, the black, silver, and red. These are, are what they call buttons. Most secondary clutches use buttons still. These are uh, a hard, hard plastic, and those buttons ride on these ramps on the Helix. These are repairable or replaceable, I should say. You can pry these out with a screwdriver and press new ones in. These are in really good shape. They protrude past the metal here. You can actually feel it. I'm confident that these are really good. And this is what surprises me is, in some cases, this clutch doesn't look like it's maintained well. But then when I open it up, the spring looks like brand new. The buttons look like brand new. The bushings are like brand new. So I don't think this clutch has really seen much use. And all of this oxidization out here is just from sitting. So this is actually looks like a really good clutch. I'm just going to pop these, these two washers out like we talked about. So 
these just fit in and they slide against each other and down here you can see the uh, those bolts that come out so that's these three bolts here but I'm going to take this off now when you take this one off pay attention because this one here this one the number three has a little arrow here I think you can see it and it points to that hole right there that is actually used to remove the belt off of the the, the, uh, the sled that's where your belt tool would thread into so when you reassemble these you want to make sure you go into this hole not the belt uh, adjustment hole now this ring comes off and you'll see it's it's ramped now the way this works is it lines up right here with a series of numbers ranging from zero all the way up to six basically it, it pushes against these little trapezoidal washers and spreads apart the clutch so this is how you actually adjust how deep into the sheaves your uh, your belt actually sits so I'm just going to put these back in you want to make sure when you reassemble it that the wide area is on the outside and and I do have a little bit of anti-seize on these you've got steel inside of an aluminum thread so I always like to use a little bit of anti-seize in there to make sure these things don't lock on to each other but you do want to make sure that the narrower portion of that trapezoidal washer is facing inside of the um, clutch itself and I'm just going to tighten these down I'm, I'm going to set it probably to like three which is the midpoint when I put a new belt on I'll readjust all of this so now I'm just going to put this back in so I'll take this and I'll slide it on here then I'm going to take my spring and I'll line it up with that hole down there until it sits in next is uh, our first sort of nylon bushing and then our second one with the dome facing up and ultimately our helix goes in like this and it has to lock onto the splines and away we go lastly I put on that washer and then it's back to the press And then you're done. You can take it off the press now. All right, this is pretty much ready to go back onto the jack shaft here. As I said, I lubricated this with a thin film of grease. You can use anti seize as well on there. Don't go too crazy with it, you just want to prevent rust. Now remember, I have my spacers back here already in place and I'm just going to now gently line this up and slide it on until it bottoms out on the back. Next, we're going to take our bolt here and I'm going to apply a little bit of medium strength Loctite on there. Just a little bit of the blue stuff. The engine and the driveline in these things really, really do um, create a lot of vibration. So a little bit of Loctite like that is going to help go a long way to keep that in place during those vibrations. And that's what the manual tells you to do. Once you have that Loctite on, it's really just a matter of threading this back in. Now, if you've had this apart to clean it, again, make sure that that shoulder washer is facing the right way so the step fits inside of the actual clutch itself so it's a little bit tricky sometimes to find the hole in there but you can do it and then you're going to thread this down until it touches making sure that that stepped washer is seated properly against the uh, against the sheaves themselves or the the sheave face Next, we want to actually torque this down. 
and it gets torqued down to 22 newton meters of force. Now normally you can reach up and hold your brake lever and that'll clamp the jack shaft and make this job a lot easier. But I actually have my brake lever disconnected right now on this machine because we're going to do a bit of electrical chasing underneath the switch there. So in order to tighten this up, I'm just going to hold the sheaves with my hand and I'm going to keep tightening until I hear the click. And that's it. It's now back in place and ready to rock. You may be inclined to over tighten this bolt. 22 newton meters isn't a lot of force on this thing. But I know I've I know of people that have over tightened this by hand. They use the tight is tight method and they've actually twisted this bolt off and left the threads down inside. So it's best to follow what the factory says, 22 newton meters, let the Loctite do its job, and now you're ready, it's basically ready to go. That brings us to the end of today's episode on how to service a secondary clutch in a Skidoo Rev chassis. I hope you enjoyed it. I may not have covered everything on this clutch, so if you see something that I've missed or perhaps have done incorrectly, please do everybody a favor and leave a comment down below and let them know your experience with these types of clutches. It really does help. If you really do like this kind of content, please consider liking this video and maybe even subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot and it really does help YouTube's algorithm to suggest these types of videos to other people who may want to watch them. Okay, I've got a few things left to do on this sled here before I put it back in the hands of my friend Mark, but I hope you return again to watch some of my other content here on Dino's Tanker Shed. I'll see you soon. I got a bit of cleaning to do.